today with my partner Lucas Pyle, and we're getting ready to get set for the Tufts Jumbos versus the Wesleyan Cardinals. Both teams are 1-0. It's looking to be an exciting matchup, right, Lucas? Yeah, for sure. Uh, a lot of key matchups to look out for, um, but it should be a great game. And, you know, um, both teams had, you know, okay records last year. Tufts were 5-4, and four, Wesleyan 6-3, and three, but this should be a great game of football. All right, we're going to come back to you after the national anthem. Thank you to the Tufts University Pep Band for that stirring rendition of the National Anthem. We're ready to get set for this Saturday night matchup uh, between the Tufts Jumbos and the Wesleyan Cardinals. Both teams had resounding victories over their opponents. Tufts beat Hamilton 29-2 and Wesleyan uh, beat Middlebury 52-21. Lucas with such explosive offenses and such great defenses, what are the keys for each team to get victory here? Well, I think for Tufts, definitely the defensive line has to put pressure on Wesleyan. Like Tufts did against Hamilton in their 29-2 victory, they had six sacks last week. And if they don't, well, then one of the best QBs in the NESCAC, uh, Picarillo for Wesleyan. If he has time to pick his pass, he will find it. 155 passing yards last game with two touchdowns. Tufts also have to take care of the ball, especially in big game situations. Um, we've seen uh, for Wesleyan, it's about containing um, the Tufts QB McDonald. You know, he had four rushing touchdowns and that was a big key for uh, Tufts to win last week. Wesleyan set to kick off. Tufts won the coin toss. They elected to receive. Kickoff. New rule in the NESCAC. Kickoff starting from the 40 for player safety. And we are underway at Zimmon Field. Number 22, Charlie McPhee. Past the 10. Running to the outside. He's got room. He's still going. And he's brought down at around the 40 yard line by number 32, 33, excuse me, Matty Drouillard. Great starting field position for the Jumbos. That's almost a 40 yard return. And that, now they give off the offense to the Jumbos starting quarterback, Ryan McDonald, the dual threat man. Out of, uh, excuse me, out of Annandale, New Jersey. McDonald passing for almost 2,000 yards last year, and he hands it off to Dom Borelli for a gain of about a yard. Dom Borelli out of Petty School, teammates with number 53 on the D-line for Wesley and Jude Lindbergh for a couple years. Well, I think tonight we're going to see a lot of read options for Todd. Number... Number four, Taj Gooden. He's out of Brooklyn, New York. So good stop there. Read option as we saw. Uh, 
McDonald handed off to Borelli, but then he faked it, took it back right out the middle. We're going to see a lot of carries from Ryan McDonald. He was their leading rusher last year as the quarterback. For out of Shane McDonald didn't allow him to run. High snap here. Lapiana is going to punt to around the 20 yard line. Not going to touch anyone. And 15 yard line or so. And now the ball is going to be 11 interceptions. He was named starting running back out of Roxbury, Mass. Yards on 15 attempts. He also had one reception touchdown as well. Yeah, and the reason I say that they need to stop Picarillo here, oh, is they play a little trickery here. Three receivers to the left. They motioned off. And you saw uh, with Tufts, they didn't really get much of their offensive rhythm going. And already, you know, two plays and they've got a first down. Wesley, a good start for them yep. this game. Picarillo is so dangerous that that running game could be open up. Tufts has to bottle that up against Hamilton last week. They stuffed them. 24 carries, negative 11 rushing yards. That's incredible. But now they're facing a real test in Picarillo here. First and 10 from about the 27-yard line in the shotgun. See the snap, read option, and that's going to be a pass complete to number 23, Joe Scanarella. Last week against, uh, against Middlebury, he had one catch for 18 yards and a touchdown. So Scannarella with his second. It's going to be a, a draw for Picarillo. We'll see if he picks up the for the day. He, just like Ryan McDonald, is also Wesleyan's leading rusher from last season. Rushing for 474 yards with a 3.1 yards per carry average. So a new set of downs, that's the second one for Wesley and on this drive. I'm talking about Pinkerell in the last game, he had uh, more than 40 rushing yards. So he's such a threat. Pinkerello hands off to, to Smith and he is bottled behind the line. That's that Jumbo's pressure. And that is gonna be the third tackle for the linebacker Greg Holt is all over the field. Eight tackles, two sacks last week. He is going to be a player to watch. You see he's motioning on Picarillo. So second and 11 for the Cardinals. And that's going to be a completion for number six, Dario Highsmith. Highsmith last week had six receptions for 87 yards. Wesleyan's leading receiver from that game had a 34 yard catch and it's going to be third down and about five here big possession oh, oh and it nothing called yet don't see any flags Tufts almost jumped could have cost them the first down now third and five for the Nescax best QB Perillo back, looking, fires, and it is caught by Highsmith. Excellent reception on the post route by Highsmith. That's going to move the chains to the Tufts 39, and Picarello showing why he is dangerous. Yeah, you know, on third and five, such a big play early on in this game to keep this offensive drive going. Now they're into enemy territory, and they put themselves in a great spot to you know get the first point of the game. Picarillo now in the pistol. So interesting formation out of the way. To number 34, Sean Penny, tackled by number 96, Kevin Quisumbing, quality player for Tufts on the line. He had one sack for 11 yards last game. I mean, even starting this game, they'd have more success. And that is going to be, he moves out of the pocket, throws it out of bounds, pressured by number 44. For, crucial, stopped out, throws off balance, and that's incomplete. And so that is going to be fourth down and eight. 
great defense by Tops. Once again, very similar to the, the last uh, play. Putting Piccarello under pressure and forcing him out wide, and he just has to throw it to no one. Out of bounds. And now that's going to bring out the punt team for Wesleyan here. Number 13, Sam Hahn, uh, punter out of Tacoma, Washington. He was named second all NESCAC last year. Second team all NESCAC, excuse me. And he is a quality punter for Wesley, and he's going to boot this to about the 10 yard line, and that's going to go out of bounds at the seven. So, excellent job by Sam Hahn, kicking it out of bounds and pinning the Jumbos deep in their own territory. Well, he was a reason last week, uh, you know, the punter for why they did so well in the game, putting uh, uh, Middlebury uh, in a really bad field position and giving um, you know, Wesley and the chance to put themselves in good field position. As we see, uh, you know, second second offensive drive here for Tufts. Yeah. The first drive was, you know, not very good. What can McDonald do here? We'll give you the starters. At QB, as always, it's Ryan McDonald at running back Dom Borelli. Actually, that's they're going to go with an empty set. The jet sweep is faked, and McDonald is only going to get about a yard here. So they fake the jet sweep. The jet sweep was one of my favorite plays when you get one of your receivers just running at full speed. Hand off to Borelli in the shotgun. Nice. He evades a tackle. He's oh. got room. He keeps going, and that's going to be picking up a first down. Dom Borelli from Petty. Great run there by Borelli to get Tufts their first first down of the game. Evaded two tackles there. Almost stumbled. That's a great hard run. That's a 13-yard run for Borelli. And now first and 10 with a new set of downs. Oh, almost, almost intercepted. Ryan McDonald throwing into double coverage. Tried to get, tried to get his receiver, O.J. Armstrong, well, we've seen McDonald, the ball and, oh. and we, We've seen McDonald in the past, um, last season, 11 touchdowns thrown, but also 10 interceptions. So that is um, something to, uh, to worry. And that's going to be Borelli stopped behind the line. A lot of tacklers, a lot of red and red and white around Don Borelli there. And number 79 is a little slow to get up here. I think that's number 70. Yeah, it's number 79. Uh, the left tackle, Josh Thibault, out of Durham, Maine. So he's going to get helped off by, I think it's the trainer. That's a big loss for the Jumbos here on their second possession. Yeah, not a good sign. Needing help to walk off. Hopefully, you know, it's not that bad of an injury. Maybe he can come back into the game. And now I think replacing him is going to be Khalif Jeter out of Pottstown, Pennsylvania. Went to the Hill School, prep school in uh Prep school in the Maple League, same league as Jude Lindbergh and uh, Dom Borelli. And that's going to be third and ten. McDonald not finding much. Evades oh. tacklers, and he is sacked, brought down by Taj Gooden from Brooklyn. And that's going to be a punt for the Jumbos. Wesley and are really, really, really stifling this tough offense. They can do practically little you know they're putting containing McDonald you know gave him no passing options and then couldn't even allow him to run well you know the Jumbos are always looking to run on every possession last last week against uh, last week against Hamilton they uh, had a run pass percentage of 63.2 percent as that is going to be a fair catch by number 23 Joe Scan Carella at around the the 40 yard line. So once again, this is what we were talking about before the game started. Wesleyan's offense is going to get good field position on their drives, and that punt by uh, by excuse me, Sam Hahn was so effective because it pinned the Jumbos deep, and if they didn't advance that far, it meant that Wesleyan there for Picarillo. Just overthrowing it a little too high. Second line here. 
That's about a seven yard gain for Highsmith, second reception of the day. And once again, another little flight. It's third and three for the Cardinals here. Let's see if they can convert. Converted about a 40% clip last week. It's going to be a play action. Off balance throw and a beautiful catch by Halvard Landeval. Made sure to get his feet in bounds. That's going to bring him to the, about the jumbo 17 yard line. And Picarillo off balance, throwing off his weak side, was able to complete it to Handeval. Or Landeval. He's in such an incredible player. And now into the red zone. Again on a third down. You know, they're two for three on third down completion. That's going to be a handoff to Glenn Smith. And that's going to get a good amount of yards here. About a six yard pickup by Smith. Greg Holt, number 54, with the tackle. Again, Wesley in the pistol. Picarillo has two receivers to his left, one to his right. Has the ball and hands off to Smith. And that is going to pick up about three yards there. So that was actually second and four. And now that's going to be, believe, third and one. So another third down situation here for Wesleyan. They've converted a bunch of them so far. Let's we'll muscle up, see if that D-line can get some pressure and stop the run game. We a handoff to number 34, Josh. No. Let's see if that's a first down. And that's fourth down. They stopped him. The Tufts D-line got the pressure yeah. they wanted and the penetration. I think they're going for it. Oh, you of course go for it. They were one, one for one on uh, fourth downs um, last week against Middlebury. What can they do here? No reason why you wouldn't hear. Chance to get seven on the board. That's going to be a handoff to Penny, and he's going to pick it up. The line just kept pushing here, and that is going to be a first down conversion, fourth down conversion, excuse me, for with a Wesleyan offense. And it's gonna be first and goal from, from the five. Great hard running there by Penn last week. And that's gonna be Smith to the side. He's in for the touchdown, but there is a flat. That's gonna be, that's gonna be holding on Wesleyan. So that's gonna push them back all the way let's see where they spot this yeah it's going to push them back 10 yards so it's going to be first and goal from the 15 for wesleyan fortunate turn of events there for yeah, the jumbos for sure and a bit of a setback but we know with picarillo you know dictating the play he can make anything out of nothing handoff to smith is going to go for about a yard or so. It'll be second and eight or second and nine. Well, at the moment, Tufts are just doing enough you know, to keep Wesleyan out. But for me, you know, watching you know, Wesleyan in the, uh, in the red zone, for me it's just a matter of time before they get on the scoreboard. Yeah. Tufts are struggling offensively and you know, Wesleyan are getting closer and closer. One for Smith, so it's gonna be second and goal from the 14 yard line for the Cardinals. He's gonna motion Highsmith out wide. And he's under pressure, evades the rush. He's still going, lofting it in, and it's an interception! But a flag on the play. But if it stands, it is an interception by the quarterback, number two, Miles Ship. Beautiful, beautiful work on coverage. Stuck with his receiver the whole way, tried the fade route, but we're gonna see what the flag is. Oh, I think it's gonna be a flag on the defense. Let's see what the signal is. Don't. Wow. Oh, that's defensive holding. That's gonna be an automatic first down 
for Wesleyan. Wow. Jumbo crowd does not like this. And this is just after, you know, Wesleyan had a penalty for a holding. Now Tufts sort of gift them a, you know, a penalty right back and gives Wesleyan another opportunity. Yeah, didn't see who the holding was on. Referee's still looking where to spot this. They're going to spot it at the seven. So it's going to be first and goal from the seven. Seems like we've been in the red zone forever here, Lucas. Yeah, definitely. And who's going to, you know, who's going to come out on top? It looked like Wesleyan at one point. Then the momentum sort of shifted back to Tufts. It's, it's back and forth. Wesleyan with a jumbo set here. They're just going to run it with Smith. And he's going to be oh. tackled there by number 24, the free safety, Michael Maghetto. Excellent stuff there. Tufts recognized that they were running with the jumbo set. And the jumbos, <laughs> in a fitting fashion, bring the safety down and make the stop. It's second and goal from the 11-yard line. Well, I think if you're Wesleyan, I, I, I want to see a pass here, you know, because they, you know, the run game at the moment is starting to fall off a little bit. And let's see if Picarillo maybe goes for a, you know, a short pass for a couple yards, just get them a bit closer. Motioning Brendan Patterson to his left. Penny is going to be brought down. That's going to be number 19, the linebacker, Jack Walton. We gotta give credit to Tufts. This red zone defense has been really impressive. And now, I think that was a loss of about, oh no, that's a gain of one. So third and goal from the 10. Piccarello has three receivers to his left, one to his right. Also Penny to his right in the shotgun. Crucial, crucial play for the Jumbos and for Wesleyan. He's gonna get pressured. Nowhere to go, evades the rush, but he's going to be brought down by a swarm of Jumbos, led by number 98. Sam, oh no, excuse me, McCoy Berger. And that's going to be a sack. Big, big sack. And just like last week, that defensive line putting the pressure on the quarterback. We didn't see it early, but the Jumbo's red zone D is stiffening up. But now they have the kicker, Patrick Wolf. Was one for one on field goals last week, but converted seven extra points. So he is a good kicker, and he got a lot of work. I think we might see a... End of the quarter. That's going to be the end of the quarter. Wow. That went fast. Yeah. And it seemed to all be just, I feel, maybe like half of that quarter just in a red zone battle between Wesleyan and Tufts. But I think right now, even though it's 0-0, I think Wesleyan have got to be the much happier team right now because Tufts have got no offense going. And if it stays like this, you, know, you can't win a game of football without scoring points. And if Tufts don't have the ball, then they're in trouble. Well, you look at time of possession, heavily, heavily, heavily in favor of the Wesleyan Cardinals. 11 minutes and 22 seconds for Wesleyan, only three minutes, 38 seconds for the Jumbos. Now they're gonna flip fields here, but Wesleyan has just had the ball the whole game. And you wonder, now the Jumbos have a lot of defensive intensity. You're seeing the D-line really getting that penetration, sack on the last play, but the more you have the defense on the field, the more tired they're gonna get. And so now, field goal unit is gonna be brought in. Ball's gonna be spotted from the 21. Fans so about a 31 yard kick here for Patrick Wolf. Last week's long was a 27 yarder. He's from Terrytown, New York. Went to Fordham Prep for high school. And now is kicking for the Wesleyan Cardinals and he's converted all of his attempts on the seasons thus far. And he's gonna kick off here. As we said, uh, kickoffs have been moved to the 40 for player safety. NESCAC just adopted the rule this year. Another rule change in the entire NCAA uh, to prevent the kickoffs, which, as been said many times, is one of the most dangerous plays in sports. If you fair catch in anywhere inside the 25-yard line, it is an automatic touchback. That one... Of course, new rule doesn't apply. Kicked out of the back of the end zone, and the Jumbos are going to get 
their first possession of the second quarter here. I think it's great that uh, the NESCAC and the NCAA are looking out for their, you know, their players' uh, health and well-being because this is such a physically demanding sport. Pressure off the left side by the defensive lineman KJ Laguerre. So smart decision making from McDonald, and he is going to underthrow number 14, Spencer Klaus. It's going to be incomplete pass. I think that was a good idea, and we're seeing a lot more um, McDonald looking to try and pass first um, in this drive. Um, yeah. And he nearly got that one, and yeah. it would have been a, a very good uh, play to get a first down, but now it's a second and 10. McDonald, 59% completion percentage. He's going to hand it off to uh, to Padrini here. Not going to pick up much. Good penetration and push from the Cardinal D-line. And again, they're at that third down, third and long again. You know, this is a, it's a very, very tough position. Yeah. Third and eight for the Jumbos here. In danger of their... I think that would be their second straight three and out. They've only had the ball for one one possession, I believe. So McDonald's going to take the snap. He's going to loft it to number three. Oh. OJ Armstrong and not much there. Dangerous game you're playing with Wesleyan here because they can really control the clock, control the field. For sure. And they, they've got to find something new. They've got two left. So, Lucas, what have you seen really out of both teams, and what do you think they need to do better so far? Well, I think, you know, as I said before, Wesleyan have, uh, for me, played very well, especially on the road, um, you know, at a tough place to play. They played superbly. Now for them, it's just about getting a touchdown. Um, you know, they got a field goal, got on the scoreboard, that's good. Now it's about, you know, they were in the red zone for such a long time, but they were only able to get a field goal and at one point they were at the five yard line. So that will be a bit disappointing. As for Tufts, um, something needs to change on the offense. Maybe they just need a little bit of luck. Um, keep Wesley in that bay, especially in that red zone battle. La Piana back to punt around the 29 yard line. Last year he had a 36 yard punting average. He's gonna loft it high hanging kick. And that's going to be fair caught around the 17-yard line. So excellent punt here from Alex LaPiana. Pins him back below the 20. And that's what you want to see out of your punter. For sure. Um, the last time, you know, Tufts had to punt, uh, they only got it. Uh, they were still, in, you know, in their own um, half. But now, you know, penning uh, Wesleyan back. And they have a long way to go to get to the end zone now. Yeah. And you'll see LaPiana not coming off the field. He's going to line up at safety. Of course, the starting strong safety for the Jumbo defense. Piccarello in the pistol. Going to hand off to Smith, who is stuffed for about no gain here. So the Jumbo's rushing D, while looking susceptible early, has started to come around a little bit more. For sure. For sure. Um, Smith was having a lot of joy in those first couple of um, possessions. Had a good run to start the game, but now he's you know, starting to slow down a bit. And I wonder if is going to start um, looking for more passes, especially trying to look for um, Dario Heisman. Yeah, I number think he's been their best receiver so far. Number 96, Kevin Quisenbing on the tackle. He had two tackles for loss and a sack in the game against Hamilton last week. Second and 10. It's going to be lofted deep down the field, a go route, and it's just overthrown. Pass intended for Dario Highsmith. Number 26, Tim Preston, arguably the Jumbo's best cornerback and their, one of their best defenders on the field in coverage. Well, that was a great matchup. That was just a one on one. Highsmith trying to do a little juke, trying to get away from him. And, uh, you know, the number 26, Preston, doing everything that he could just to stop him. Yeah. Have it's always great matchups, the, uh, the cornerback versus the, the receiver. Haven't seen a lot of the deep ball. Might wonder if they try to air it out now that the run game has started to slow up a little bit. Especially Third and down. 10. Piccarillo back. Ooh. Oh, rush is coming, and it's overthrown. He was smacked behind the line by number 55 for the Jumbos, Stephen Timmons, the linebacker. Absolutely rocked well, there. Again, putting Pecorello under pressure. 
you know, they really haven't allowed him to get into his passing rhythm. Hasn't had many passing yards, and that's been because the defensive line have gotten past the offensive line of um, Wesleyan and made him, you know, push him out wide, throw off balance. Sam Hahn's last punt went for 30 yards. Let's see if he can get more here. He's going to punt it. Short oh. kick. Not a great one here from Hahn. That's going to be... Oh, what a run. Is that Pedrini? And a great return there. I, I believe... I think Bryce Adam. The number 27, Bryce Adam. Bryce Adam with an incredible return. Not a great kick from Han. Didn't have great hand time. He was able to run onto it at the 50. And that's about, about a 25, 26 yard gain on the punt return. And, and now the Jumbos are close to the rest. Senior uh, from the Bronx. That's only the second completion. Quick third down and seven for the Jumbos. Pareda to McDonald's left. He's going to take the ball. Passing situation. Line closing, and he, he is overthrowing number 80, Winton Blunt. Pressure came quickly there from number 78, KJ Laguerre. And we'll see what, what the Jumbos do here. It was a good idea for McDonald's. Allswager. He was one for one on field goals last week, but missed two of his extra points. Let's see if he can put it through the uprights and tie the game. Ball is spotted. It is up. It looks good. And it is. Nice. Three points. 41-yard field goal for Matt Als Alswanger. Just got it in. But Tufts won't mind. It wasn't pretty, but they're tied, and they needed that. They needed a little boost. And it all came from the defense. And right now, it's just a defense. You know, which defense can do more to help their offense, basically? Last year's long for Allswanger was a 41-yarder, wow. and he matches it there. A little shaky last week, as, he, as we discussed earlier. 41-yard field goals in D3 football are no joke. You see no. kickers in the NFL making 50, expected to make these 50 yards, 45-yard kicks. But this is tough stuff. 40 yards away, almost half the length of the football field. Great kick by Oswanger. Oswanger, excuse me. And the Jumbos are set to kick off. They actually don't use Oswanger on kickoffs. They use defensive back Tega Egbiri. And he's going to boot it to around 10 yard line. Ooh. And the ball is muffed. There's oh. a chance for the Jumbos oh. to pick it up. Is it recovered by the Jumbos? A massive pile up here. We'll see who they, who they give it to. Jumbos are motioning towards them. It is. It is. The oh. Jumbos recover. Oh. Incredible. A, a costly mistake by, I believe, that was Joe Scannarella, number 23. And the Jumbos have the ball on the 11-yard line. What a mistake by the Wesleyan Cardinals, and the Jumbos have a chance to score their first touchdown of the game. Again, it's the defense, and they just pounce on the air because he dropped the ball. It looked like he might get there first, but then out of nowhere, the tough defense hitting him hard, getting to the ball first. Based on the pats on the, uh, the D-line, uh, on the sideline there, that was recovered by John DeLuca, number 46. Great special teams play so far Whoa. from the Jumbos. And that's going to oh. be it for the touchdown! Number 85, Jack Donahue is in for the score! First passing touchdown of the year from the Jumbos offense. And they are on the board with a touchdown. Well, out of nowhere, they have responded superbly well. That great of a kick. It went only to the 10-yard line. He still dropped it. And, and, you know, will that be playing in the back of his head now going into this... Uh, this next kick. But look at the demeanor change for this Tufts offense. You know, in the first quarter, you saw them, you know, when they were on the bench talking over their plays. You know, they seemed a little bit down, not sure what to do. But now, suddenly, 10 quick points. And that's going to be, kick is going to be caught at the 10 by David Estevez. And he is going to be dropped around the 20 yard line. Jumbo's good to converge on that uh, against the dangerous uh, 
Dangerous David Estevez. Last week against Middlebury, he was electric from the punt returning position. Three punt returns, 66 yards, cool. a 59-yard punt return to set up a two-yard run wow. by Sean Penny. So he is dangerous, and that's why they put him back there. But great job on the Jumbo special teams. They have really carried them tonight. It's going to be first and 10 for Picarillo, and that's going to be complete to number six, Dario Highsmith. Again, he's looking for about a seven-yard gain. Again, he's looking for Dario Highsmith. That's the connection that I think uh, Wesley and want. You know, their best receiver in terms of reception yards. And Picarillo now, you know, he's in a tough spot. And he needs to get this Wesleyan offense going. He needs to get some uh, rhythm going. Well, it's also a little more difficult for Picarillo than last season. Uh, senior Mike Bruler, the offensive player of the year in the NESCAC, over a thousand yard season. As that's gonna be a direct snap to Estevez, and he is gonna be dropped for a one yard gain. So interesting trickery there from, from, the, uh, from Wesleyan, but it's all for naught, and Picarillo is going to come back onto the field. As I was saying before, they lost Mike Bruller, who was the all NESCAC Offensive Player of the Year, over a thousand yard season for Wesley in last year. Easily their best receiver, and one of the best receivers last year in NESCAC, and maybe in D3. And now it's a third and one, crucial for Wesleyan to try to pick up this first down and restore momentum. Picarillo out, and it is overthrown. He missed Hallbard Landera on the out route, and that is going to probably bring out the punt team. Wouldn't be wise to go for it here. Fourth down. Just not a good throw from Picarillo. He seems yeah. a little off right now. Yeah, he does. It just overthrow. We saw one earlier in the first quarter when he had a player open, and he just you know, threw it to the high, and that one there could have gotten some yards, but just couldn't connect. And right now, Wesley, and, you know, the game, as we've said, it's flipped on its head. Some strange inaccuracy from a 30-yard line by number 27, Bryce Adam, and not much there on the return. Good punt coverage there by the Wesleyan Card. In their own territory, how will they respond to that? Yeah. Tackle there made by Wanyan Mon. Fun name there. Defensive back, he's a junior from Canton, Mass. Went to Canton High School. And good for him to make that stop. Maybe give Wesleyan a chance to get their D-line to work. And a quick snap, hurry up offense. McDonald not seeing much, and he is going to be dropped behind the line, but there's a flag. Tackle was made, I believe, by number two, Cole Harris. That would be a sack, but we're waiting on the flag from the officials. Oh, and that's a killer, holding. And all their good work for that, you know, that throw. Um, to Dan DeLeon has just been undone. Yeah, they're right back to where they started, basically. And now it's an even worse position because they're at first and 20 on the 30, about the 37 yard line, they're gonna spot it there. So 11 yard penalty on the holding. Differed from the NFL, holding is done from the spot of the foul. He's gonna read option here. McDonald is gonna run for not much on first and 20, about a four, no, that's a good pickup. About a four yard pickup, but. Just run this. You don't wanna see an interception here if you're McDonald. McDonald, 10 interceptions last year. So prone to mistakes. Play action there, and that is gonna be badly missed by McDonald. Dan DeLeon targeted here. That was going to be Pat Leone on the yeah. coverage. Pat Leone almost getting a, a hand to almost intercepting. Again, McDonald being a little risky. But I also think that shows that he's still confident in, you know, trying to pick up some good yards with his arm. It's going to be third and 17 for the Jumbos. Bit of a long shot here to convert. But he's going to take the snap, McDonald. He's going to air it out to number oh. three. Oh, oh, and he's still going. That's going to be O.J. Armstrong. By O.J. Armstrong. 
the sophomore from Miami. Brilliant play, because it was zipped into him. Had to catch it, almost pushed off balance. Great play. Wow, what an energizer there oh. from O.J. Armstrong. Didn't even crack the starting three wide receivers. Oh, and there's a jumbo down. Oh, not a good sign. And he is not, he's on his back right now. Can't really see who that is. Might be one of the offensive linemen. Oh, and that's a big loss for the jumbos. That's going to be the right tackle. Arguably one of the Jumbo's best player, their best offensive player, Tim Reitzenstein. The first team all NESCAC right tackle is being helped to the sideline. So that's, they've had injuries to both their right tackle and their left tackle. But that's Tim Reitzenstein. They're going to evaluate him on the bench. Hopefully he's okay. That's going to be second and seven on the 35-yard line for the Jumbos. Ball snap. Fake. Nice. That's going to be caught by Spencer Klaus for a first down. And the Jumbos are starting to get really, really rolling right now. Yeah. And McDonald is starting to dictate this game, not with his running, but with his passing. And that's great to see for Tufts. Yeah, yeah this is the growth that fans of the Jumbos have wanted to see from Ryan McDonald now in his last year as a senior that ball is going to be carried by McDonald he's going to try to pick up what he can and it looks like that's going to be for either no gain or a loss yes no gain on the little counter there by Ryan McDonald it's actually sort of been a flip-flop of what we're usually seeing his passing being better than his running but yeah, it's going to be a loss of one. Second and 11 for the Jumbos at the Wesleyan 28-yard line. Brandon Morris on the tackle. McDonald, quick dump off to Borelli. Borelli showing burst. Getting through. Is he in for the touchdown? He's in for the touchdown! Dom Borelli gives the Jumbos six points. Great blocking on the play. Excellent running, great vision, just hit every hole, and that's going to be 16 to 3 in favor of the Jumbos. Could be 17, pending the extra points. Huge, huge play here. About five minutes ago. Fantastic, just a little pass there for McDonald, and Borelli did all the rest with his running. He's a running back by trade, and you, you saw it there how he just went left, right. All left, swinger right. for the extra point. Ball is spotted, and it's good. Extra point is good. It's going to be 17 to 3 in favor of the Jumbos. Oh, no good, no good. Excuse me. My apologies. That is a missed extra point for Matt Allswanger. And for Tufts, and especially for Allswanger, you better hope that it doesn't come at the end of the game, it doesn't come down, you know, to those extra point missiles. We saw last week he was two for four. Tonight, now one for two. You're right, he is 50% on the season still on his extra points. Did not seem to have this issue last year. Converted 93% of his extra points. He's already missed more extra points yeah. than he did all last season. I believe he only missed two last year, and now he's missed three. Hopefully, Alswinger can shore up his kicking as we're going to get an. That's going to be. Decent return there. Past the 25 yard line, so better than a touchback. And it looks like David Estevez, excuse me, has become a little more of a you know, reliable kick catcher uh, for the Wesleyan yeah. special teams. But this is a huge, huge possession for Piccarillo. To respond in this QB duel. Piccarillo has been the for the inaccurate one today, 6 for 12, 61 yards on the day. He's going to fake the handoff, and he is rushing. Piccarillo at the 50, at the 40, and he's going to be brought down by number 24. Someone jumped. I think it might have been number 59, Jovan Nanandovic. Yep. That's a penalty on 
D-line sub, Jovan Nenandovic, out of Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. Makes a mistake there. Smith to Picarillo's right. Three receivers left. Possession of the ball. And that is going to be fourth down. Great throw there by Picarillo. Deep in the coverage. Almost had the touchdown there. But, of course, it was the pressure by the Jumbo D-line once again that forced that incompletion. Yeah, forcing Picarillo wide. Had the lob went up towards the corner. Smith was so close to getting it. But uh, in the end, no touchdown. And they're going it's going to be a 39-yard field goal for Patrick Wolf. Converted earlier on, and the kick is, it's good. It's going to be his second field goal made of the day. He's made a 31-yarder and a 39-yarder. He looks to be a fantastic kicker. I mean, those are bit, his two field goals have been spot on. Nice and beautiful chip right down the middle. So that's 10 makes on the season on 10 attempts. I know they're different extra points versus field goals, but it's nice after you move on from one kicker to have you know, stability in your kicking situation. Sure. And now it's only a 10 point game in favor of the Jumbos. They lead 16 to six with the score. You know, and it keeps them within touching distance right now, Wesleyan. Still more than a, you know, not a one possession game as of yet, but, you know, if you get points, you get points, and that always helps. 3.50 left in the first half. It's going to be Patrick Wolf to kick. We're at the 40 yard line. Three kickoff returners deep, four toughs. <laughs> Ball is up. It's back in the end zone. And we're going to see it's muffed a little bit. Then it's touched down by number 22, Andrew Sanders, the junior running back out of Bernardsville, New Jersey. A lot of New Jersey on this team, it seems like. Yeah. And now the Jumbos will have it. It's been his arm, not his legs, that have carried the Jumbos to this 16 point. To these six Session, they have to be smart with the ball. Pass Ooh. is complete to Halvard Landeval on the post route. To Dan De Leon. Oh, Dan. Oh, excuse me. Dan De Leon. Hurry up, offense here. Ryan McDonald looking for room. Is going to throw it down near Borelli. So that's going to be an incompletion for the Jumbos. D line got penetration there. Second and 10. Haven't really had a lot of success. Um, they had one where they actually had a penalty and they got pushed all the way back. And that one there, you know, no gain. Yeah, Dan DeLeon, two receptions, 31 yards from the Jumbo's own 42-yard line. Well, tough time. I think this is a big third down, not just because, you know, you want to get the first down, but also to be aware that Wesleyan could end the half with the ball, and then they'll start the second half with the ball as well, which could be a huge advantage. And that's oh. a catch complete to Dan DeLeon. He is emerging in this game. And that's another first down completion. It seems like he just keeps picking them up. Yeah. And it's from Dan DeLeon starting out, coming in, getting that ball. A big, big throw. McDonald has had a very good second quarter. Donald, read option here. Woo! Spin move and dives for about a five yard pickup. Four yards, excuse me. McDonald, a. Uh, Nice spin move for yeah. a quarterback there. You don't usually see that. That's more like a running back move. Yeah. Great play. That's probably one of his better runs of the, uh, of the evening. Well, he hasn't had many. Only that's going to be nine rushes for about eight yards so far for McDonald. Donald, pressure. Pass complete to who else but Dan DeLeon. And that's going to be, he's going to be wrapped up around the 38-yard line. It's going to be probably third and two for the Jumbo offense. Well, this offensive drive has been just the uh, McDonald to Leon uh, 
to the De uh, Leon um, option. It's just been all about that in this drive. Yeah, he's going to come off the field in favor of Spencer Klaus. Third and two. Scanning. Running is McDonald, and he slides for a first down. That's a great play. That's a really good play. Don't force a pass if it's not on there. And he saw the space to run and just pick up that easy first down on the third down. And great play by McDonald. And this is something we really haven't seen much out of the Jumbo's offense. Usually it's just read option after read option. But we're seeing the passing game open up the space for McDonald and these other running backs to run. Dan DeLeon is having an exceptional evening, and so is Ryan McDonald. First and 10 from the 35. Screen to O.J. Armstrong. Oh, and he, he's down. No, he's... O.J. Armstrong was down. He lost the ball, but he was down, and that's going to be a three-yard pickup on the screen by O.J. Armstrong. Quick lineup here for the Jumbos. I think there's going to be a timeout for Wesleyan. That's going to be their second charge timeout of the half. They're going to take a break as the Jumbos once again march into enemy territory here. And this would be a huge time to get, you know, you know, a field goal, a touchdown, just some extra points going into the half. Because, of course, Wesleyan do start with the ball in the second half. Now, last year, last year, the game against Wesleyan, it was at Wesleyan. The Jumbos were up 14 with 10 minutes remaining. And Ryan, uh, excuse me, Mark Piccarillo had the ball, led them back to tie the game with six seconds left in the fourth quarter. And then on the ensuing overtime, Piccarillo throws a touchdown pass, and McDonald throws an interception, and the Jumbos lose 24 to 17. So you never want to count out Mark Piccarillo because he can lead them back. Yeah, he's a game 30 yard line. Wonder, do they go for a pass here, try to get that first down, or just trying to get a couple more yards, maybe put them in a bit better of a field position? We'll see. They're going to stack the box here, Wesleyan. Penetration throws deep to O.J. Armstrong, and he dropped it. O.J. Armstrong had the ball. Yeah. 
And we're back here from Harold uh, O. Zimmon Field. The sun has set here in Somerville, Massachusetts. And we're going to see if, just like the day, the Jumbos can close this out. Hi, I'm Trevor Russo, joined once again by my partner, Lucas Pyle. Lucas, a strange first half for the Jumbos in a positive way. Yeah, for sure. You know, the passing coming to life with McDonald, two passing touchdowns. And I think also another thing to look at, um, which was very important, they improved the third down efficiency, um, improving to 44%, which is, you know, still not great, but much better than they did uh, last weekend. And as for Wesleyan, uh, not as good, only 25% on third downs. And Picarillo, who we thought was going to have, you know, a much uh, bigger impact, you know, really hasn't had many, you know, only 7 for 16, only 66 passing yards. So not a great uh, first half. Pulling out the uh, handy calculator here. That is a completion percentage of 43.8%. Last year, we'll remind you, he had a completion percentage of 70.4, 2,600 yards. And tonight, only 66. And I think the big factor there has to be the D-line, getting penetration on almost every play. For sure, they've been pushing him wide, making him you know, have to make these difficult throws. And here we go, second half underway. Egbiri back for the kickoff, and he's booting it. Short kick here, that's gonna be uh, Estevez. He's gonna be around the 20 yard line. He's gonna keep muscling his way through to the 27 yard line back. So once again, we don't really see that new rule used. It's been yeah. just kickoff after kickoff after kickoff. You're kicking it out of bounds, but uh, Egbiri's content to just kick it to Estevez and he is content to take it out, not wanting to settle for that touchback. First and 10 on the 27 yard line and that's gonna be Picarillo running with the ball. He's still going and he is brought down by a combination of Greg Holt and I believe Miles Ship? No, no, it, it was number five, Alex Lapina. Well, again, Picarillo going back to that run we saw right at the end of the um, uh, of the first half when they got their second field goal. That's when the Wesleyan D, uh, offense looked the most dangerous when Picarillo was running and gets the first down. First and ten from the forty. This is Smith running for. That's going to be about a six-yard gain. So good run there by Smith. Great push, especially by. I think that's the uh, the left tackle Ryan Shuda. So, gain of six yards. Glenn Smith now up to nine rushes for uh, about 23. You want to you want to start establishing the run now. Yeah. It's a new quarter, a new half, and Picarillo is going to try to get you know, re-energize. He's going to air it out deep. This is to Ooh. Halvard. Landeval, but there is a flag on the play. The ball was incomplete. Number two, Miles Ship in coverage, along with number 24, Michael Maghetto. But this might be pass interference. We'll see what the call is here, but it doesn't look good for the Jumbos. Oh, wow. And that's going to be on the defense. The Tufts fans you know, right in front of us are certainly not happy about that. Yeah. The coaches as well. I'm a bit surprised. But I... Wow. Big so call. that is that is pass interference, right? Um, I believe so. Yeah, they're moving. Or no. 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 That so for a different call. So not as far up I, as... I, I think that might line. have not been pass interference because that's usually 10 yards from... Not sure exactly the NCAA rules, but whatever it is, it's a new set of downs and a new set of downs, more importantly, for the Cardinals in Jumbo territory. Read option here to Picarillo. He's running, and that's going to be, he's going to be brought down. Great tackle there by Picarillo. And that Picarillo was the, um, you know, the, uh, the more of the running sort of quarterback, and then uh, McDonald was one of the passer. I would have believed you. Because that's shown, I mean, Picarillo, 
he's been more effective when he's run and McDonald when he's passed. But coming into this game, we thought otherwise. That's going to be Smith of the handoff, and he's going to get a chunk of yards here. Let's see if it's enough for the first down. I think it's short. But a good pickup for Glenn Smith. Well, let's see how this tough defense. They're uh, going to spot it. Spot it at the 31-yard line. So that is not a first down, but is instead a six-yard pickup. And third and one for Wesleyan and quarterback Mark Piccarillo. The crowd is into it. This is crucial. First possession of the second half. Piccarillo in the pistol. One receiver to his left. Jumbo set. One receiver to his right. He hands off to Smith, and that's going to be a first down. They had a bunch of big boys up near the line of scrimmage. I think it was it's about seven players. So they must have the job done, basically. Once again, it was Sean Penny coming in for a third down to get that just that one yard oh. because he's so good at pushing through the line when they need it most, and they've got a big first down. Yeah, you're right. That was Sean Penny. They're short yardage back. Doesn't get a lot of yards per carry, and it's going to be Piccarillo on the rush, and he is... Back once again, but for a good, good gain there. Tackle made by I believe number nine, Nemensoma Nwafar. Two yard pick. We we expected to see today. The Carrillo in the shotgun, four receivers. Interesting formation. Both receivers on either side are lined up behind each other. Separation, and that's caught. That pass is caught by number three, Evan Hall. Great. I believe that's a comeback route from Evan Hall. Miles Ship was in coverage there. Got beaten on the comeback, and that's the precision that Mark Piccarillo has lacked for most of the game. And he finds it there, now in the red zone. First and goal for the Cardinal offense. Ball spot on the nine-yard line. Handoff here is to Smith. Smith dives forward and he's in for the touchdown. Cardinal touchdown for Glenn Smith. That's a nine yard rushing touchdown. Great start to the second half for the Cardinals. First offensive possession and they get a score. They've responded well. Must have had a good halftime team talk. And Glenn Smith got in there, evaded the tackles. Yeah, great push from the offensive line there. Glenn Smith's first touchdown of the year. And now Patrick Wolf, who has converted two kicks so far, both field goals, tries for his first extra point as Wesleyan had their first touchdown of the day. Ball is up. It is spotted. And the kick is good. 13 points for Wesleyan, 16 for the Jumbos. And once again, it is a tight game against Wesleyan. Yeah, no surprise Wolf made that one. I mean, he has been superb with his kicks, whether it be the extra point there or the field goals. But for the first time, the uh, Tufts uh, defense, especially in the red zone, weren't able to hold back, and they've conceded their first touchdown. Yeah, no, the the push from the offensive lineman was a lot better. They seem, a, they seem much more energized coming out of that half. They're getting pushed, they're getting five yard, six yard carries, four yard carries. If you can get, the difference between two yards and four yards on a carry is immense. And, and so. Giving, and yeah. they're giving Piccarillo more protection as well. We saw one big pass. Um, I believe it was to Evan Hull uh, in that drive where Piccarillo had a lot of time just to pick his spot. And that's also important as well. Because if you give him the time, he will find his passes. Wolf back for the kickoff. Three receivers, or three, three potential kick returners back for Tufts. Kick is high and far, and it is out of bounds. A devastating mistake for Patrick Wolf. He kicked it out of bounds. That's the biggest thing you cannot do as a kicker is kick it out of bounds and as we all know that means that it gets booted up to the 40 yard line 
or it could be different. I, uh, I'm not <laughs> too familiar with the NCAA <laughs> rules. I'm going to be honest. Looks like the 35, maybe. Okay, so in, okay, so in the NFL, 40 yards, NCAA. Looks like it's actually going to be on the, uh, the 30. Huh. huh. Wow. Learn something every day, don't you, Lucas? Yeah, you do. But still, you know, it puts instead of maybe starting on the 10 or the 20 or the 15, they're starting on the 30, which is certainly an improvement. Now. Just looking at the jumbo offensive line here, not great news as you don't see Tim Reitzenstein out there. Still, Khalif Jeter is on the field. I don't know if he's going to come back to this game, Lucas. Yeah, we'll see. But let's see if Ryan McDonald keeps up uh, where he left off in the second quarter. McDonald slinging it. Oh. That is picked. A horrible mistake from Ryan McDonald. It's number 37. Will Kearney, the linebacker, with the return to the 34. There's a flag on the play, but he just threw it right to him. Yeah. That's the devastating mistakes that Ryan McDonald can't make. And it's just, you know, unlucky um, because he had such a good second quarter, but his first play in the third quarter is an interception. You he see, he, he, his confidence was growing, but then he just, the mistakes just crept back in. He just didn't see the linebacker in coverage. Illegal block in the back. Illegal block in the back on the wow. on the return. So the interception is going to stand, and you know that because the ref throws the flag after the interception occurs. Okay. So it's going to be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. So they're going to spot that foul at about the 35. So it's going to be 45 on the 45 for Mark Piccarillo. The Nesc all NESCAC first team quarterback as he takes the snap, hands it off to Glenn Smith, who is bottled up, tried to run left, went right, didn't see much, and is eventually brought down by number six, 96, Kevin Quizen Quizenbing. My apologies. My handwriting is just absolute garbage, so I could not <laughs> read that. <laughs> Quizenbing, uh, junior, six foot four uh, from... Los Angeles, California. And he's been good tonight. We'll get you his stats in a moment, but he seems to have had a presence. Yeah, four tackles, two solo, two assists. And that's going to be a pass for short yardage there. I believe that's to Penny. Sean Penny, yeah. yes, for about three yards or so. It's third down and eight. The jumbo defense went off the field. Ryan McDonald went on, threw a pick, and now the jumbo defense can bail them out once again. It is third and eight from the 43 yard line. They're three for nine in terms of their third down efficiency, Wesleyan. And can we're they make it four for 10? And we're seeing an energized Piccarillo. He's back. The penetration is not there. And it is a beautiful pass breakup by number 26, Tim Preston. The number one cornerback plays like a number one cornerback. Breaks up that pass to the sideline. Corner route. That was intended for Brendan Patterson. But Tim Preston, an amazing play. I cannot under overstate how crucial that was. Huge, huge play. Because it looked like Piccarello had his option, but the defender just did enough. Yeah, he and had the separation. But he did. And I think Ryan McDonald can take a, a big sigh of relief. Sam Hahn is going to kick that back into the end zone. And a, another special teams, not much of a mistake, but not what you want to see out of Wesleyan's special teams unit there, as that's a touchback. Yeah. And as, as we all know, if you are a punter, the last thing that you want to do uh, besides punting to an incredibly dangerous returner, is put it back into the end zone for a touchback. Because yeah. that just negates, you know, the importance of punting. Yeah. So it's, it's a missed opportunity, for sure. You really don't have much net on that play. Yeah. And I think the Wesleyan offense will be just a bit disappointed and had the ball in a great spot. So Ryan McDonald, fresh off a pick, two touchdowns, one interception, 11 for 21, 126 yards tonight. He's throwing, and almost intercepted again. 
Ryan McDonald is showing none of the decision making he had in the yeah. first half. Almost picked by Brandon Morris, the linebacker, close in coverage. Not much separation. Not a great throw there I think from the senior cornerback. A little bit just trying to overcompensate for that first one, trying to make, you know, he thought maybe, you know, I made a mistake on my first. And I wonder if we'll see maybe Ryan McDonald run on this play. Yeah, third and eight. Two. Yes, that's O.J. Armstrong with his heroics, but there is a flag on the play. We'll see what it was, but, you know. That could come back. I think, I think Ryan McDonald has shown a lot of courage there making that pass, but credit. Number six, Frank Roche. So that is going to most likely kill the drive. You can see the game in this uh, third quarter. We ended the first. Suddenly, even though Wesleyan are still behind, you feel that they're on the ascendancy and Tufts are in trouble. Tufts is going to move back a hefty way here. Ball is spotted on the 11 yard line. A costly pass interference penalty. These fans so here. I'm hearing it's it's half the distance on that play. So that's just going to be a draw from McDonald. He's not going to gain much. And tackle made by Brandon Morris, who's having a good game so far. Almost had the pick, and now he ends the Jumbo's drive after almost ending it a little bit earlier on yeah. that possession. And I'm lucky for Ryan McDonald because he kept going in that drive. You know, didn't, didn't take a, you know, after two, you know, poor passes, kept going, but unlucky. Now the punter, Alex LaPiana, is out to kick this ball deep, hopefully, for the Jumbos. He's had three punts today. This is his fourth. It is a high boomer picked up by Estevez. He is going to be, he's going to keep going. He's still fighting, and he is dropped. He, David Estevez. I will get that name right on one of these returns, but David Estevez, he, he has the ability to stay upright, but the jumbo punt covers and their gunners were just too much to overcome. Decent return, though, for Estevez. All right, I will dip out for a quick second. Lucas Pyle will be on play-by-play -play for the remainder of this break. Here we go, Picarillo. Nice pass. Look to that far sideline. Picarillo's pass is complete to Dario Highsmith. Highsmith again. That connection. We saw it a bit in the first half. Picarillo to Highsmith. Highsmith yet to have a touchdown this season, but he still has a number of yards. It is second and about four, and that rush, did not see who it was, but that's, that's Glenn Smith on the carry. Most likely a first down. Really seen a, a bit of a resurgent Glenn Smith. He didn't have a great first half, but his last couple rushes have gone for a decent amount of yards. For sure, he's had a good start, good start um, to this second half. And of course, he had the touchdown which puts us in a good spot. That's not going to be a first down, but it's third and one for the Cardinal offense. Jumbo crowd on their feet. Heavy set in front. Picarillo in the pistol formation. Penny is going to get the ball. He's going to jump cut out, and he's going to run for the first down. Run forwards into a bunch of other large people. He's got some mobility, and that's why they trust him to be their short yardage man. Yeah, I'd say he's a combo of both. You, and we saw it right there. He will get through those tough defense lines, but he also shows a little bit of finesse with a little juice. Picarillo is going to roll out. Pass complete to Evan Hall. Not much, though, as Hall was just running a simple flat route after the rollout there. It's going to be a one-yard pickup for Look, they're, yeah, they're, are they moving? Yes, yes, they're moving the chains. Okay. That's one of the most stressful moments when you're embodying the true sense of a 
dual threat quarterback. Five seconds on the shot, uh, the game clock here. Snap goes to Penny for the handoff. Off of the guard, Bryce Jenkins there. It's going to be a tackle made by the free safety, Michael Maghetto. And Bryce Jenkins is going to come off the field after his helmet popped off. Kind of gesturing to the sideline a little bit. So it looks like we'll be seeing numbers, uh, number 56, Ryan Goslier in at guard, the junior. Picarillo is going to fake. And it's going to be a screen to Dario Highsmith. Oh. He's going to keep tumbling his way down. The yards after the catch right now. Doing the work, Dario Highsmith is quickly emerging as Picarillo's new favorite. Touchdown early on in the third quarter. They're going to motion, Ooh. jet sweep, fake. Smith breaks one tackle and is going to get about two to three. No, that's not going to pick up much, actually. I think they're going to. Yes, he lost one yard. That's a tackle for loss for a jumbo defender. We didn't quite see who it was. But now another third down situation They're three for, for Wesleyan. In this third quarter, after being two for eight in the first half. Five for 12 on the day. Can they make it six? Or are they going to have to kick? Evan Hall motions, roll out for Picarillo, and Evan Gall is going to make the completion. Beautiful slant route there by Evan Hall. Picarillo puts it right in the bread basket, right on the numbers, runs out of bounds. That's going to be a, actually no, that's a, that's a they're saying down. that's fourth down. fourth down. This is a big, big fourth basket. down. Will Wesley and go for it. This is huge. They're going for it. Because they could just have... Paul Verdland the ball to the left. Sean Penny in the backfield. Jumbo set. They're going to snap it to Penny. He's going to run outside. Is he going to get the yards? He is. We'll see. This is going to be close. He fell down near the first down marker. They and have signaled it. a turnover oh. on downs. The Jumbo defense holds stout in the red zone. That, it, there's that red zone defense again. And what a big call. You know, we've seen, you know, maybe a mistake comes back to haunt Wesleyan. They could have gone for the field goal to tie this game up. Instead, they went for the risky play. They went for the gutsy play. They gave it to Penny, who in previous drives has held them to get those, you know, short yards to get the first down. He couldn't there. And although Tufts have it very deep in their end, they haven't conceded, which is huge. This is big. Now the Jumbos need to get some yards. I want to credit number 96, Kevin Quisenbing, on that tackle, saving the Jumbos from a possible deficit. Excellent stuff out of the D-lineman, the junior. That's going to be a rush for, for Dom Borelli for a couple of yards. McDonald was almost in his end zone there to start the drive, but and I think you know Tufts have been much more successful when they've started in better field positions. When they've been deep in their half, they haven't been as good. Um, and especially now with McDonald being a little bit shaky with his pass, it's going to be a little bit harder to get out from this position. This is the third possession for the Jumbos of this half. Don Borelli's going to run to the line. There's not much there. Yeah. The D-line just swallowed him up. Put up a wall around Borelli. And now this is a really interesting position. They're going to credit Harris with that tackle. It's an interesting position because if you, it's, you, know, if you throw it and you get picked off, you get picked off very close to your end zone. But a run on third and ten, I mean, that's also you know, a lot of yards to, you, that you have to get. So we'll see what McDonald does. McDonald in the shotgun, 42 seconds left in the third quarter, third and six. McDonald's going to take the snap, pressure, throws, oh, and it is complete to David DeLeon. He just cannot stop racking up yards. 
Well, he and Dan De Leon had a great connection at the end of the second quarter. They got together on some good plays. I think on a third down play as well in the second quarter. And here we see here right at the end of the third quarter. That is a huge, huge first down and a huge confidence booster for McDonald after a shaky start to this quarter. Now the Jumbos have it on their own 22-yard line. First down just gained. That's going to be a run by number 25, Mike Pedrini. For a couple of yards there. But Dan DeLeon, five receptions, 59 yards, 11.8 yards per catch. And that is going to conclude the third quarter of this exhilarating matchup between the Tufts Jumbos and the Wesleyan Cardinals. It's been a tight one here. Wesleyan seemed in control for the majority of this yeah. third quarter, but the Jumbos defense has held strong. They've bent, but they haven't broken. For sure. They were on a knife edge there. Oh, looks like they're announcing a raffle for the tailgate. Uh, for those who don't know, Carmichael Dining Hall was closed today for for dinner. So, some prizes being given out here. Tufts Dining Services had a nice tailgate over on uh, the fields. Uh, six zero six actually, the rugby field's out there. Well, if your number is 60167, looks like you just got a gift card. Oh, look. There we go. Well, we got the lucky winner in the crowd right now. He has some way to spend his Sunday. And McDonald's going to spend his Saturday out of bounds <laughs> as he rushes for, uh, for about seven yards, but there's a flag on the play. Could be holding, but you never know. These penalties, you know, if it does go against Tufts, these penalties have put them in a uh, difficult spot. And they're, hmm. That's going to be a chop block oh. on the, on Tufts. Yeah, so that's a chop block. So that's going to be half the distance to the goal. So wow. a costly penalty for the Jumbos. Just puts them in such a difficult spot. Because mm -hmm. they had done so well on that third down to find uh, De Leon. But now they're basically back to square one. They're all the way back at their own 12. Field has flips. So they're on the left side from where we stand. Empty backfield here for the Jumbos. Fake the jet sweep. McDonald throwing under pressure and he overthrows OJ Armstrong. Just a little too strong for Armstrong there. Well, they saw the space. As you said, there was no one in the backfield there for Wesley, and they're really squeezing up the field, almost maybe baiting him into you say, you know what? If you have to, if you want to get past us, you have to throw long. Yeah, I think it was that pressure from the Wesley and D-line. They got in his face. They didn't hit him, but they got close enough to where I think he rushed his throw. Yeah. And just overthrew him. He had OJ Howard or OJ Armstrong, excuse me, on that post route. McDonald in the shotgun. Wants the ball. Gets it out. Just got it off in time. He's running. He is he is being gang tackled here. Number 49 on the play. Jackson Amy. I'd like to make a quick, uh, correct a couple of corrections here. Uh, I was saying Quisenbing, it's Ki Sumbing and Lundzaval, not Landaval, or Lund Lundivzal. It's fourth down for the Jumbos here. Uh, Alex Ladiana, back to punt. But yeah, he was just manhandled there. That's going to be fair caught by number 23, Joe Scancarella, who we have not seen much of in this game thus far. Caught a touchdown 
for the Cardinals last week. One catch, 18 yards. He's a sophomore out of Wayne, New Jersey. Uh, another person from Jersey, Dirty Jersey, as they say. 5'11", 170. Not a big guy, but now we're actually going to see him back out there. So he's going to line up behind behind Dario Highsmith. And this is going to be a carry, Good a big one, a big carry for for Glenn Smith there. Glenn Smith has certainly improved his play in the second half. Of course, scored the touchdown, getting more and more yards on his uh, rushes. And that's also in part, as we've said, due to the offensive line, giving good protection. And that's a seven yard pickup for Smith. It seems like he's getting more of these four plus yard carries recently. So the run defense, while once stout, has kind of deteriorated here for the Jumbos. It's a rollout for Picarillo, and he's almost tackled. Oh. Throws incomplete for Highsmith. Kisumbing there on the approach almost brought him down. Kisumbing and the rest of the Tufts defense doing well once again to push Picarillo to the sideline. He nearly found his favorite target, Highsmith, the junior, but just couldn't get it to him. And a big, once again, a big, big third down. They're 5 for 13, Wesleyan. They were 5 for 13 last week. Wesleyan trails by three. Third and three for the Cardinals. Piccarillo's going to take it himself. He's going to run. And he picks up the first down. That quickness, just too much to handle for the Jumbo D-line. Already engaged with the Wesleyan O-line. To me, it looked like right when the ball was snapped to him and he got it. And to me, it almost looked like he knew right there and then, I'm just going to run it. I'm not going to look for the pass. I'm just going to look for that pocket and run. And he did. That's another big, big third down completion. And it's Picarillo again using his feet instead of his arm. It's a five-yard pickup for Picarillo. First and ten on the jumbo, 38. Picarillo in the shotgun. Fakes to Penny. Oh. He's going to run it again. Let's see if the jumbos can tackle him, and they do. Tackle made there by, I believe, Greg Holt, who we have, whether by just virtue of not seeing or or him not being on there. We haven't called his name yeah. as much. Hasn't as been as influential as it was last week. But it seemed in that play but as if Tufts were almost confused. They thought uh, Piccarillo didn't have the ball. It was a really good fake. But snap to Smith, and he is oh. dropped. Michael right. Mugetto brings the hammer down on Glenn Smith. That's a textbook tackle right there. I used to play on the uh, the Tufts rugby team. They always say you don't want to leave with your head. You need to get your shoulder, engage it down, hit them in the hips, and that's what Michael Mugetto did. And now another third down for Mark Piccarillo and the Wesleyan Cardinal offense. Piccarillo on the last one, kept the ball to himself and ran to get the first down in a similar position. Empty backfield for Piccarillo, although it's not out of the question, it's a running situation because of his speed. He's gonna look under pressure, oh. has a hand, escapes, and now it's just a broken play. Piccarillo trying to complete it, and it is almost intercepted. Whoa. Piccarillo escaped there. Tyler Scales, the linebacker, with the pass breakup, and it's gonna be fourth down. And I think they're gonna go for it, because you know, it's the fourth quarter, they've gotta get some points, gotta at least tie this game up, or try to take the lead, and I think maybe it's just a little bit too far for a field goal. Well, they're getting the uh, the signal here from They don't have much their time. Coach. I think they, yeah, timeout. They had to call the timeout. Yeah, they had 12 seconds left on the game clock there, and they're gonna just take a little break. Don't want to make a poor mistake here. Head coach Dan Desenzo, grad of Williams in 2001. He spent three years at Wesleyan. He's been 17 and eight, wow. six and three season last year. And so he's gonna get some time to talk this over, Lucas. What would be your decision 
in this case. It would be about a 42-yard field goal by I mean, we have at. seen some great kicks from uh, from the uh, Wesleyan kicker. Wolf. Uh, from Wolf. Yeah. But um, I don't know. I, it, it's it's for me it's it's sort of a, an either or. I mean I, I it is sort of a, a large uh, a long fourth down, and we saw in the last fourth down they didn't get it, but they're going for it here. Yeah. Figueroa, fans on their feet. This is a huge huge moment in the game. One four two on fourth downs in the game thus far. Picarillo in the shotgun. Smith to his left. Two receivers to his right. Two to his left. He doesn't see much. Not much separation. He's going to throw it. Oh. Covered, and that is a beautiful catch by Halvard. Oh, look this well. Oh, but there's a flag. Fans are calling for holding. And I think I, I think that's what the call is going to be because the, the Wesleyan players look a little bit. They don't look excited. The Tufts players, well, actually. That's, that's a personal foul on Tufts. Oh. That is a personal foul wow. on Tufts. That's that is huge. That's that's big. I don't see what I don't. I can't recall what the personal foul was on. No, but I didn't see. You know, no, I, I didn't see much. But you know, really, you know. Was there a hit? Did you see? Do you see whether Picarillo was hit? That might I'm have been not it. Sure, but I mean, either or, they still got the completion. Yeah. So I'm getting word that was roughing the passer from our good people in the PA booth. So, possibly a mistake. Game actually here. Oh, we're gonna see a direct snap a to second. David Estevez, and he's gonna run it in. Jumbo defense does a decent job of getting it in, but a trick play there from, from, uh, from the Wesleyan offense. I mean, direct not. snap to the wide receiver, <laughs> David Estevez, the dynamic punt returner from River Edge, New Jersey. Tufts are asking so much of their defense. Again, another red zone stand. Another, you know, first and goal, second and goal stand, and end line stand. And they're continuing to do it. Estevez is going to be, take the snap in the jumbo set. He is going oh. to be wrapped up by who other than Greg Holt for his 10th his tackle of the game. Big play from the junior. As we said before, haven't said his name a lot, but that is a big time tackle. I think also the defensive end, Jared Asher, was on that play too. I think Picarillo's back in the game. Yeah, they're going to, you get two stops like that, you're yeah. going to send your all, uh, your all NESCAC first team quarterback back onto the field. And they're not really sure, and they don't have much time. They're going to have to get this play off pretty soon. Eight seconds left. Jumbo set again. Oh. And they're going to fake him out wide. Estevez is oh, going to fumble the ball. He's getting it. And that oh, is going to be wow. oh, a brutal mistake there by David Estevez. Gives Kevin Kisumbing enough time to get to the wide receiver. Bring him down. Three straight snaps to David Estevez. And at some point, you got to wonder, you have the best quarterback in the NESCAC. <laughs> What are you doing? They're just trying to be too clever, and you can't. I'm sorry, but if you're not organized enough, you can't be trying to do trick plays at this point in the game. But they can still tie it up. They still have a chance to tie it up with a great kicker in Wolf. Patrick Wolf, about a 26 yarder for the sophomore. This is a bigger kick as he has to make in his life. And the kick is up. It is no good! The kick is wide left! Oh, it's wow. wide left! Patrick Wolf, his first miss of his career, wow. his first of the season, and it couldn't come at a worse time for the Cardinals. The Jumbos get a break. It is still 16-13 in favor of the Bows. Wide left for Patrick Wolf. I've got my hands on my head here. I, I was sure that that went in. I mean, thinking that Wolf was taking it, sure that he was going to make it. I mean, he has been so efficient, but he misses that one. And in the end, if this game finishes for a tough win, I think Wesleyan will be asking, will be, uh, have kicked themselves in the foot, really, and will be asking themselves, how have they not taken advantage of these red zone opportunities? Yes, the tough defense has played well, but 
some crucial mistakes as well. McDonald slings it, almost intercepted! Ooh. Number 37, Will Carney had the ball in his hands, oh. bounced off. The Jumbos get another break after the huge one they just got from Patrick Wolf. McDonald this has is... got to be smart with the ball. He's got to make sure that if he's going to pass it, he has to be certain that it's finding its mark. I want to see the Jumbos run a lot more here. And they're going to run with McDonald. Go. He's going to sidestep his way go. through the Wesleyan defense, brought down by number 16. Actually, I think that's Ben Thaw, the defensive player of the week for the NESCAC last week had two interceptions, one for a pick six. Did not make all, he was the NESCAC leader in interceptions last year too. Third down and two, and McDonald is going to be brought down behind the line. He's down, that was a huge, huge hit. Oh, and he, he's, he's walking around a little gingerly there. I believe that was number 55, Bobby Nevin on the stop. And we're going to see Alex LaPiana out for, I believe, yes, this is going to be his sixth punt of the game. He's had, he's had a net average of 37.6 on his punts, two inside the 20, longest 44. He's going to have to boom it here. Long, high kick, great hang time. And that is going to be fair caught by number 23, Joe Scancarella. I guess David Estevez not out there after, uh, hasn't been returning punts recently ever since he got moved into that kickoff role. But that's going to be a fair catch. And Lucas, that punt was huge. Yeah, good, good punt. But, um, you are holding that. You win 200 in Jumbo Cash. Come on up to the press box. $200 in Jumbo Cash cool. just announced. Woo. But we got a football game as the handoff to Smith gets about four yards or so. And I, in my opinion, I think Glenn Smith has been the X factor for this offense, the Wesleyan Cardinals, in the second half. He has just, that is another four plus yard carry and when you can gash a defense for four plus yards every time they start committing more defenders for jumbos sure. now have about seven in the box so they're heavy towards the run receivers all bunched that's going to be a pass in the flat to smith oh and he's top number 23 i i can't see who the number is that's going to be of course Sam Hahn back to punt. Good punt. Number 27, Bryce Adam to receive, and he's just going to let it roll to about the 25-yard line. So not a great punt there from Hahn. Does not get it on in the, the 20s. Now often 20 yard, inside the 20 yards is often one of the best stats to determine how good a punter is. It's not, of course, perfect because if you're punting deep in your own end zone all the yeah. time. It's going to be tough to boom at 80 yards, but this is a you like to see this for the Jumbos. 25-yard line, they're not backed up in their own end zone like they've been in other possessions. Yeah, but this is a huge, huge possession for Ryan McDonald. He has to use the ball smartly. He's got to make the right passes. I think right here, I think you would agree, I think he should run in this, but it looks like he might pass. No, he's going yep. for a run. That's going to be a run by Borelli. Lowers his shoulder and tackle made by the defensive back, Eli Blair May. They had three receivers on that side. Completely fooled me there. Well, that, that was the intention, I guess, <laughs> to, fool, to fool the Cardinal defense, but it did not. And the defensive back coming down and making the play. Yeah. That's what you want to see, tackling out of your defensive backs, especially on a big guy like Borelli. He's had 200-yard games consistently back when he was at Petty, which is coincidentally my high school. <laughs> so I know he's a good runner. Oh. And that's going to be caught over the middle. Jack Donahue on the corner route. And that's going to be a pickup of a first down. Ryan McDonald stays strong, throws a strike, and you can hear the crowd with 4.57 left 
on the clock. That is big to get Ryan McDonald passing the ball. I, I think the best thing about Ryan McDonald's performance, even though there have been some flaws, is she shows zero fear, zero fear. And that is so big, especially in these you know pivotal moments in the game late in the fourth quarter in a three-point game to get that huge first down just to move the ball further forward, further forward. They're going to motion Borelli out, but McDonald's going to take the Oof. snap, and he is dropped by Cole Harris in the backfield. Great tackle. And they snuffed it out. And it... I'm going to be honest, I don't really like that. I don't... I feel like these McDonald's handoffs has not have not been working the yeah. entire game. They've not really McDonald been now I think he is he is fifteen for twenty two yards or so, or sixteen for twenty two. Great. It's about a one point something yards per carry. Second and twelve. McDonald back to pass over the middle. It's caught. Frank Roche with the completion. I think one thing that I've noticed is a lot of his passes are going to the middle. Receivers starting from out and going to in. He doesn't really look for uh, passes over the top, out toward the sideline. He's looking for a lot of, you know, into the middle of the field, which are certainly a little, a little bit more risky. But he's getting them done right now on this drive, which is big. But well, I think they're down again. I think they're trying to throw away from Ben Thaw, who's for been sure. lining primarily out as the number one cornerback on that outside receiver. So when you can get that production from the slot, it's huge. But it is a third and two for Ryan McDonald and the Jumbo offense. Can they convert? A blitz coming. Pick up. Borelli, is he good? No. He might be short. I think he's short. On first glance, I think he was short. His knee may have gone down before Borelli placed the ball past the line. It's fourth down. And wow. the Jumbos have a big decision to make. I think it's too risky, I think, to go for it. I think it's too risky to go for it. I think they have to punt it. Just push Wesley as far back as possible. We don't see Alex LaPiana. Yes, now, now they're coming out. Piana is coming out. Punt team is on. The Jumbos will punt to the Wesleyan Cardinals with 2.53 and counting remaining in the ball game. We've seen Mark Piccarillo come back against this Jumbo team before. It happened last year. Will it happen again? LaPiana, back to punt. It's going to be a fair catch by Joe Scancarella. And now it's Mark Piccarillo and his Cardinal offense. Going to be a lot of passing attempts on this drive. Wouldn't you think? Yeah, for sure. They're starting at around their own 15. They just, remember, they just need a field goal. They just need three points to stay in this game. To tie it up. But of course, a touchdown. That'd be huge. And that's what they want. Two timeouts remaining for the Cardinals. Piccarillo, 16 for 28, 136 yards. No touchdowns, no interceptions. He's back. Rush coming, and it's incomplete. That's going to be Joe Scantarella. Excuse me, I've been saying his name wrong. He needs to move the ball up the field a bit quicker. You know, clock against him with two minutes to go. He's going to lose his right tackle too, or his tackle in general. Yeah, his right tackle, Terrence Norton, is out. His helmet came off on the play. It seems like if your helmet comes off, you got to come out. I like that rule by the NCAA. Sure. Wesleyan doesn't like that rule. <laughs> Number 74, Dalton Garver, the junior from Fresno, California, in. And Piccarillo is back. Rush is coming. He throws deep. And it's oh! going to be caught. What a Harvard Lundesvall with the reception of a lifetime. Blanketed. On the streak route, he completes the pass. Clutch production. That is classic Piccarillo. I mean, just the clutch play. More than a 50-yard pass. I mean, come on. Incredible. Uh, Lundeval, excuse me. Lundeval with the exceptional catch. He's going to throw incomplete. Missed Smith 
on the flat route. Don't know why Piccarillo felt like he needed to rush that. 1.48 remaining, clock is stopped. Piccarillo in the shotgun. And I think they got the Tufts Dumbo defensive line to jump. That may have been, that may have been number 44, Jared Ashler. We're gonna wait for the call. And that's going to be a an offsides penalty on I believe uh, on I believe Jared Asher. Second and five. Picarillo in the shotgun. He steps back, deep drop. He's going to air it out, and that's going to be incomplete. Halvard Lundeval wants a, uh, he wanted a flag there, pass interference, but that ball was not catchable. Yeah. It was out of bounds. Good coverage there by, by number 26, Tim Preston, the number one cornerback. Clearly he's gonna be shadowing Lundeval for the rest of this game. Again, it's a third down. Are we gonna see Dario Highsmith with the completion? It's all up to Picarillo. He's gonna air it out, oh, and it's complete oh, oh. to Lundeval. Lundeval's fourth catch, another first down, moving the chains again, and the Wesleyan Cardinals are in the red zone. Piccarillo. One thirty-six left to go. It's just Pickerel is just dragging his team up and up the field. But the last time they were in this position, remember what happened? They messed up in the red zone, you know, six or seven yards away from the end zone, and then missed the field goal. They can't do that now. Tufts looking blitz. Do they go for it? They're going to blitz. Piccarillo is in the grasp of number 24, Michael Maggetto, and he is sacked for a massive loss. That had to be at least 10 yards. This could be a drive killer for the Cardinal offense. And, it looks like and they're going to take a timeout. Yeah, they're going they're to timeout. have to timeout. They have to take a timeout they have there. To. I mean, it is such a big play in the Tufts defense. If they win this game, it'll be because of the Tufts de defense for me. Their defense in the red zone. That play just exemplifies what this Tufts defense has been all about. A huge, huge sack. And now Piccarillo has to do something out of nothing. Now, uh, we actually, uh, our computer's out of battery, but you don't need battery to say how good the Jumbo's defense has been up to this point. Like we've said, they have bent, and they have bent, and they have bent, but they have not broken. They've only surrendered 13 points. They surrendered zero points last week. It's, however, okay, they're going to mark the ball at the 41-yard line. That's going to be about a, th a second and 19. Wow. For Mark Piccarillo. Fans on their feet. And the offense. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. They need a big completion here. But can the Jumbos get pressure with their front four? Snap to Piccarillo. He's under pressure. He's going to run. He's done it before. Greg Holt. Greg Holt and Tyler Scales do what they have not done before and took down Piccarillo on a run. We've seen him run to the outside. We've seen him run to the inside. We've seen him juke. But Piccarillo could not get past it. The Jumbos are on it. It is third and 13. I think right now they just need to get in, uh, at least into a position where they can make a field goal. I think that's what they have to salvage from this. Piccarillo rolling out. He doesn't see anyone, and he's just going to... Run for a one yard gain. The Jumbo D, their defensive backs, shored up. And I think it's, it had, I think they had. And they are going to call the field goal unit out onto the field. Patrick Wolf is one for two on the day. He has made an extra point, he has missed a 26 yarder. 
And now, this would be about, I'm gonna wanna say, a four, at least a 40 plus yards field goal. The ball is snapped, the kick is up, and it looks, it is wide right! It is wide right! The Jumbos have held strong, and they can run this clock out. The Tufts Jumbos have held strong, and they are going to be the victors of this football game. Patrick Wolf, seven extra points, one field goal last week, one for three this week on field goals. And it's gotta be, you have to say, that game changing play was that sack by Michael Maghetto. Great play. And I think if you had told Tufts that they didn't score a single point in the second half, they would have been worried. But yet, you know, bar something incredible happens right here. They're no, gonna win this it's, game. It's a kneel down. The game is over, ladies and gentlemen, barring one more kneel down, of course. They're gonna bring this clock down. It's about 29, 28 seconds. You see it on your monitor, and the Jumbos see victory. They're gonna celebrate. The line jumps all over each other. The crowd is on its feet. And the Tufts Jumbos will improve to 2-0 on the year. Statement victory, statement victory. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the game. The Tufts Jumbos are victorious. They win 16 to 13 over the Wesleyan Cardinals. They avenge their comeback loss against Mark Piccarillo. Instead, he is the one who's brought down instead of the Jumbo defense. And what an, what an incredible game, Lucas. I mean, this is my first time doing football. I want to keep doing more of this if games are like this. This is incredible. And I think for me, the game-defining moment has to be at the end of the third quarter when Wesleyan had it in the red zone for another time, and yet they didn't give the ball to Piccarillo. They gave it to the interesting option to Estevez two or three times, and it just never worked, and then the missed field goal. And that's, you know, Wesleyan, I think in the end, will be kicking themselves. But Tufts, give them credit. Their defense was out of this world. Superb. Mm -hmm. Exceptional stuff. But your yard line for two to three downs. I, it's, it seems like an eternity ago. But instead, they went to a trick play to Estevez. That didn't work. They went to another trick play to Estevez. That didn't work. They tried it with Amherst, Trinity, uh, and Williams, who all won this weekend. We'll give you those scores now, actually. Trinity defeated Bates 59 to 16. Williams defeated Colby 36 to 14. Amherst defeated Hamilton 37 to 14. And Middlebury defeated Bowden 37 to 24. And of course, the Tufts Jumbos defeated Middle, uh, Wesleyan, excuse me, 16 to 13. Now Middlebury, or no, excuse me, I'm, uh, sorts here. Wesleyan, excuse me, will move with the loss to a tie with Middlebury at one and one. So they are in the middle of the pack at 500. The Tufts Jumbos undefeated thus far, two and oh. Wesleyan next weekend will be at home against Hamilton, the team the Tufts beat 29 to two. And the Tufts Jumbos will be at home again for homecoming weekend against Bates who are 0-2 and, and just lost 59-16 to to the defending champion Trinity. So it'll be a great one next week we'll, at 1.30 p.m. Be sure to tune in to JumboCast. We'll see you next week. This is Trevor Russo signing off. And for Lucas Pyle and myself, thank you all for watching. This has been another wonderful JumboCast broadcast.